Hello friends, it's Christy Marcotte. Jaded Blossom has a mini off-road release this month and it's so much fun. Jaded Blossom's mini off-road release is available now, and if you are interested, I do have links in the description box below. There are four items in the release. The first item is a car die set called Off-Road Vehicle, and this car is so much fun. A couple months ago, they released their cruiser car, and now they have an off-road vehicle. The off-road vehicle is fairly large, but it does fit on an A2 size card horizontally and also vertically. I'm showing it here with an A2 size card base. If you're using the traditional gnome hat, which is a little bit taller, you'll probably want to put the car on a vertical card. But if you use the shorter hats, it'll fit nicely horizontally on a card. And instead of the gnome driving the vehicle, you could also have the pets. I did that in a previous video using the cruiser car die set. The next item in the release is a stencil set called Tire Tracks. There's one stencil and it includes a variety of different tire track designs. Then the final items are the stamp set and coordinating outline dies. This is called the Road Less Traveled. As always, it includes a fun variety of sentiments. Take the road less traveled, keep on trucking, a little dirt never hurt, where the road ends, the fun begins, adventure awaits, bumpy roads lead to beautiful places, life is better off-road, life is better covered in mud, and a few others. I do have a few cards to share using the new release. I thought I would start off by assembling the new off-road vehicle, and of course I had to make a pink one. I cut out the very background piece from pink cardstock, although all of this will be covered up, so you could use any color. I use black cardstock for the tires. I'm adding those first. For the front of the vehicle, I'm using the same pink cardstock and also a light pink cardstock for that very front that has the grill. I'm not a car person, so I don't actually know the names for these parts. I love all the stitch detail and Jaded Blossom really does a great job by adding all those small pieces to really customize your images. After adhering the light pink piece down, I'll put glue on the back and attach the front of the vehicle. And you can see how it lines up with the background piece. It just doesn't include the steering wheel or the side mirrors. Since I'm going with a pink vehicle, I thought it would be fun to have a pink glitter steering wheel. I'll put glue on the back and adhere that in place. For the bumper, I use some silver pearlescent cardstock. All of the cardstock I'm using for the vehicle is from my scrap drawers, so I'm not sure of the brand or color names. For the headlights, I use some light yellow cardstock. And for the little metal pieces that attach the bumper to the vehicle, I use some silver satin mirror cardstock. Next, I'll add the six skinny pieces that make up the grill, and I use some silver mirror cardstock. It's nice that the light pink piece has the stitch lines, makes it really easy to add all six of those skinny pieces down. I am using a pair of reverse tweezers to hold some of the smaller die cut pieces and the glue I'm using is barely art glue. I stored all of my die cut pieces in one of scrapbook.com's stack and sort trays. After cutting all those pieces out, I didn't want to lose anything and these trays were great. Next, I'll adhere the side mirrors. Put a little bit of glue on the back and adhere them right on top of that pink background piece. I'll lift up the vehicle, use my fingers, and push that mirror in place. There's always that little bit of adjustment time when using Barely Art Glue. That way you can get everything lined up the way you want it. Then the final piece for the vehicle is the license plate. I did cut this out from some pattern paper. You'll see that here in a moment. It's the very bottom of the background piece of pattern paper I used for the card. Instead of adding a license plate number, 
I'm using some Love From Lizzie peel offs. This is the mini star style in the pink holographic color. It'll add that little bit of sparkle to the pink off-road vehicle. For the background of my card, the pattern paper is from Violet Studio. It's their ombre collection. Selected this lovely blue and it goes to sort of a light peach color at the bottom. And it's from that area that I cut out the license plate. I cut the background piece to an A2 size, four and a quarter inches by five and a half inches. I'm adding a couple of stitched hillsides at the bottom. I used some dark brown cardstock and cut out those pieces using Jaded Blossom's border die set number two. For the larger piece, I glued it down and the smaller hillside, I did pop it up using some thin foam dimension. This is an off-road vehicle, so it's time to get muddy. I'm using Distress Oxide Vintage Photo Ink Color. Just adding a little bit all over the vehicle. The gnome has been having lots of fun and she's not coming home with a clean pink vehicle. I'm doing all the inking on Waffle Flowers Mini Stencil Mat. Super easy to clean. I've already assembled most of my girl gnome. Don't need to add the feet since they won't be visible inside the car. For her dress, I use pattern paper from Doodlebug Design. It's one of their petite prints, pink with white polka dots. And I use teal cardstock for her hat. And the hat is from the Coco add-on gnome set. I don't want the one little foot stub to be visible on the side of the car, so I am using my scissors to trim it off. The other one will be tucked behind the vehicle completely, so I'm not worried about that one. To adhere the gnome, I put double-sided adhesive tape on the back of the vehicle underneath the steering wheel and use glue on the other two areas where it's touching the gnome. Now it's time to add her hands on the steering wheel. I'm putting some foam tape just on the back side of her hands, then glue on her fingers where it'll be touching the steering wheel. So there is my girl gnome in her pink off-road vehicle. And now it's time to get it even muddier. Using some brown watercolor paint, I'll add a splatter all over the vehicle and a little bit on the gnome. There really isn't a lot of control when doing the splatter, but if this gnome is driving around in the mud without the top on her vehicle, she's bound to get a little muddy. Now I'll do the same thing to the background of the card, although I am trying to focus it more toward the bottom. I don't want it all the way up in the sky. I did set both of those pieces aside to dry. Now I'll add my card front onto a card base. I'm adding ATG tape on the back. I've already gone ahead and put foam dimension on the back of the vehicle. Although I do need to remove one of the pieces on the tire since I'll be tucking it behind that first little hillside of mud and I'll be adhering the vehicle at a slight angle. Now I'll remove the release paper from the foam. I did put a scrap piece of cardstock behind the gnome's hat to help keep her at the same level. The foam dimension would have been too thick. I'll put glue behind the front tire and also the gnome and adhere the gnome in the Jeep on the front of the card, putting it at that slight angle. And I am tucking both of the tires behind that front muddy hill. The very top of the gnome's hat does go off the end of the card, but I'm not worried about it. To give the card a little more motion with the mud splattering everywhere, I'm adding some mud splatter pieces. And the die set I use is the balloon dies. These are actually the little highlight pieces you can add on the balloon, but I thought they would also work for little splatters. I cut them out from the same brown cardstock color I used for the mud, and I want them to stand out just a little bit more. So I'll darken all of those colors using Catherine Pooler's cargo ink color. The stencil mat is made from silicone, so I can just lay those pieces right on the mat, use my blender brush, rub it over the top of all of those pieces, and now I have a darker brown color. I'll be adding the splatter pieces in front of the tire on the left side of the card. I'm laying those pieces out on the card first to figure out the placement. And I did cut out more pieces that I'm actually using. I wasn't sure how many I would need. 
For this splatter piece in the very lower left hand corner, part of it will be sitting on that little muddy hill in the front and the rest will sit on the tire. So I am adding a small piece of foam dimension. For all the other splatter pieces, I'll glue them down. The very first small splatter piece will end up getting covered up with the sentiment. But I wasn't sure of the placement, so I did glue that piece down. I thought about adding a couple more, but decided to finish with those six pieces. But in the end, you'll only see five of the splatter pieces. For a sentiment, I've already stamped and cut this out. A little dirt never hurt. I use Catherine Pooler's Party Dress ink color. There really isn't any space at the top of the card, so I'll be adding this sentiment in the lower right hand corner. Part of this sentiment will sit on the tire and lower portion of the bumper. I'll add some foam dimension for the top portion of the sentiment that's not sitting on the vehicle. Then I'll put glue on the back and adhere the sentiment in place. I also cut out a couple of clouds. The cloud dies are from the rainbow die set from Jaded Blossom. And I did cut them out from some white shimmer cardstock. I'll add one cloud in the upper left hand corner, another cloud on the right side, and I am having the clouds go off the edge of the card. I'll simply flip it over, trim off the extra. Then I'll use that leftover piece from the cloud on the right side and adhere it in front of the cloud on the left side. Then I'll flip over the card again and trim off the extra so the clouds are all flush on the edge of the cards. The white portion of the sentiment was standing out way too much for me. So I decided to add a little bit of the vintage photo ink on the edge of the sentiment. So there is my finished card and I love how this card turned out. This gnome is having so much fun driving around in the mud and getting super dirty. Now moving on to card number two. I'll start off by stenciling the background using the new tire track stencil set. I have a piece of craft cardstock in my mini stencil mat and I decided to put the stencil at a slight angle. I'll hold it in place using some of scrapbook.com's mint tape. The ink color is cargo from Catherine Pooler and I'm adding just a very light coat of ink to the background. I'm not worried about the very bottom since that area will be covered up. This cardstock piece is A2 size, four and a quarter inches by five and a half inches. Now I'll add a couple of Muddy Hills. I use the same border die set number two from Jaded Blossom. And this is also the same brown cardstock color I use for the first card. I cut two hills and I'll pop up that shorter hill using some foam dimension. Now I'll add that muddy splatter all over the background using the same brown watercolor ink. I'll set that piece aside to dry and start working on my gnome. I've already assembled part of my girl gnome. The pattern paper I'm using for her hat and also the dress is Camo Adventures by Paper Rose Studio. I believe this collection has been retired, but I thought it would be perfect for this little girl. The gnome will be standing, so I did cut out the legs from the outdoor gnome add-on set. And I used my scissors to trim off the little white foot stubs from that background piece of the gnome. She has some dark green boots, green pants, and I use black cardstock for the sole and laces of her boots. The leg piece is designed so they can be sitting doing the splits, or you can cut it in half and have them standing. And that's what I'm doing for this gnome. The hat she'll be wearing is from the fishing add-on set. For the brim of the hat, I use more of the camo pattern paper. And the green cardstock is the same color I use for her pants. For the girl gnome, I always attach the dress first, then her head. Next, I'll attach the hat. Now I'll add her nose, and I did pop up her nose with some thin foam dimension. After attaching the nose, now I'll add her hair and I use one of the newer hairstyles for the gnome, the curly hair. And her red hair will add some nice contrast with all the brown and green on the card. To adhere her legs, I'll put a strip of double-sided adhesive tape on the back side of the gnome, and I'll place the legs at the bottom of my silicone mat, trying to get them nice and even. Then I'll place the gnome's body on top. 
If you're looking for skin tone cardstock for your gnomes, Jaded Blossom does sell a paper pad by P13, and I do have it linked in the description box. For this gnome, I used a different color. It's Nectar from Concord and Ninth. And I've also added a link for that cardstock if you want even more skin tone options for your gnomes. This gnome will be holding a map, and the map image is from the Outdoor Gnome add-on set. I use light blue cardstock for the main portion of the map and green cardstock for the land pieces. I'll use some of the leftover brown ink on my blender brush, add it to the edge of all the map pieces. Now I'll glue down all the land pieces. The map does have stitched areas showing where you add some of the land pieces, but you can put those wherever you want. For a sentiment, I've already stamped and cut this out. Life is better covered in mud. I use the outline die and cut out a second piece from brown cardstock. And I'll layer those two pieces together, creating a brown drop shadow underneath the sentiment. Next, I'll attach her hands on the edge of the map, so it looks like she's holding it. And the map is fairly large, so it does cover up part of her face and her dress. I'll put a little bit of glue behind her fingers and attach the right and left hand. Now I'll flip over the map and I will be popping it up with some foam dimension. I was trying to figure out where I needed to add the foam pieces depending on placement in front of the gnome. The larger black foam piece I'm putting on the back of the map was the one I removed behind the tire from the previous card. It was still good so I didn't want that to go to waste. Then I'll remove the release paper and adhere the map in front of the gnome. The gnome will be standing in the mud more toward the bottom of the card and I'll add the sentiment at the very top. I don't want it super white so I am using some of the leftover brown ink on my blender brush. Now I'll pop up the sentiment using some foam dimension. I'm using Honeybee Stamps black foam strips. I'll remove the release paper and adhere the sentiment at the top of the card. Currently, this gnome is way too clean, doesn't fit with the sentiment. So I'll use some more of the brown ink, add it on her hat, her boots, and also her legs. The ink color is Cargo from Catherine Pooler. It's a nice dark brown color with a little hint of green in it. The gnome is still not muddy enough, so I will be doing the brown watercolor splatter, but I'm only adding the splatter on her boots and her legs. So I'm covering up the rest of the gnome with a sticky note. Since she's just walking in the mud, not driving a vehicle in the mud, I figured she'd only get muddy on her legs and her boots. I did set her aside to dry. Then I put foam dimension on the back, just not putting foam behind the boots. I'll put glue behind her boots, then adhere the gnome on the front of the card. I wasn't fully trusting that the paint was dry yet, so I didn't want to touch her boots with my hand. Instead, I was pressing it down with the end of my tweezers. Then looking at the gnome, I decided her hands would probably be a little bit dirty, so I did use some of the brown ink and lightly brushed it on the edge of her hands. I have one more card to share. I've already assembled it. I made another off-road vehicle, this time used some of the camo pattern paper for the vehicle. I have a boy gnome driving, and he is driving on the street, not in the mud, so I didn't do any mud splattering at all, and added the sentiment, adventure awaits in the upper left-hand corner. Now here's another look at the three cards I made using Jaded Blossom's brand new mini off-road release. If you enjoyed their car cruiser die set, you will probably love the off-road vehicle as well. It's fun to have more vehicle options for the gnomes. I think the off-road vehicle in camouflage would be perfect to make Veterans Day cards. If you are interested in any of the products I used in this video, I do have links in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day.